Welcome back to Maths Plus. Today we're covering the 2022 Junior Cycle Higher Level Exam. First of all, the question is in Financial Maths. We have to change the, the value of $699 into Euros and we have to apply a shipping cost of 30 euros let's have a look at the numbers first of all multiply out your rate so we have 699 multiplied by 0 0.9 or else you could write 90 percent as well with your calculator multiply it out and let's convert our dollars to euros the result is 629 and 10 cent we need to get the total cost therefore we'd add in the 30 euros 62910 plus 30 which is equal to 659 euros and ten cent straightforward enough there the next one we need to look at the rates 20% rate and a 40% rate the key word here is the balance anything above the cutoff of 44,300 we're going to apply 40% tax to that for the first band at 20% we will get a result of 8,860 euros the second part is more tricky just be careful here so we have 56,000 we go up to the top limit subtract the lower band and we will get a result of 4680 euros for the second band so just be careful with separating out the bands and it will make sense Jane has an annual tax credit of 3,300 euros. Well, this is going to be taken from our net tax. So let's see. So the total income is 56,000. Gross. We're going to deduct the two taxes, which is a total tax 4680 and we're going to plus back in our 3300 which is the credit so the total net income is 46760 and this is the amount after all the deductions have been taken into account so we're on to question two now and we have to fill in all the possible outcomes of two matches win lose or draw so let's fill in the table so we're going to double up w w win win and so on so w for the first term and L for the second term here and then D win draw win draw 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 lose lose win lose draw and lose lose so this is our sample space for all the possible outcomes for the two matches win lose or draw Maeve thinks that each outcome 
in the table is equal, equally likely based on this find the probability that Maeve's team win at least two matches at least one match of the two so for at least we need to take one as a minimum okay so one or more so we're going to get this result through the principle of counting so let's go back and let's identify all the matches with one win or more so we have one two three four five so that's a five over a total of three by three which is nine so the probability of at least one win is equal to five over nine Maeve's team play five matches in a competition, work out the total number of difficult, dif different possible outcomes for the five matches. For example, one possible outcome would be win-win, lose, draw, win. So if that's the case, well, we have to look at all the possibilities and we need to find out how many possibilities if we have five options. So for instance, if we have the first option, which is win, lose or draw, well, we can say that there are three possible outcomes there. When we go to the second one, again, we can say there's three possible outcomes. And keep going for the third one, for the fourth, for the fifth. So let's multiply them all out. So it will be three to the power of five. So it will be 243 different permutations. We're going on to the um, goals per game now. So for 11 matches, these are the number of goals per game, as you can see that we have three goals in one of the games and three goals in the last game as well. So let's work out the mean. So we're going to sum up, okay, the number of goals, so the sum of the number of goals over the total amount of matches, okay. So we're going to get the matches. All right, so we could call that in. So let's sum them all up and we will get we're going to get 21 goals over 11 matches. So let's work that out to one decimal place. And we will get 1.9 goals per match. Complete the pie chart below. So we need to work out the proportions of how many goals per match. Okay, so the, 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 the count of the goals Okay, with respect to the overall number of matches. So for instance, let's work out one um, one of these um, angles. So let's take zero goals. 
Let's work out that one. So if we go to the table, we have one, two instances of zero goals. So that means we're going to have two over 11. That's your proportion. And we will multiply that by 360, which is the full rotation of the pie chart. And we will get approximately 65 degrees. We can do this for all the other number of goals. So for instance, if we look at the seven, we can say that there's one instance of that. So for the seven goals, there's one instance. And we can say one over 11 multiplied by 360 degrees and that will give 32.72 degrees, approximately 33 degrees. All right, so let's look at the pie chart. So just present, work out all your angles um, in the manner shown earlier and present it like that. Just put a title on your, on your pie chart as well. So anybody looking at it knows exactly what is being presented 22 question 3 it's a coordinate geometry question so let's have a look the first part is find the coordinate the second part is find out where this line intersects the y-axis and then we have to get the equation of a line through q okay a perpendicular line so let's look at all the parts so we want to get point p as you can see where it's up here in the left quadrant. So we go out minus one and we go up plus three. So minus one in the X direction and plus three. And just, just double check that because we're going to use that a lot in this question. So the next part is find out where the line PQ crosses over the Y axis. So let's look at the diagram and there's a specific condition highlighted where where it crosses over the y-axis x is equal to zero down here. So it makes sense. So all we have to do now is apply that to the algebra. So we will write our equation again. x plus 7y is equal to 20. Substitute in now the condition for the y-axis. And we will get 7y is equal to 20. Let's divide both sides by 7. And we will get a cancellation here on the left. So therefore, y is equal to 20 over 7. And finally, we'll have a quick check. Does it make sense? Well, if it's up here above 2, yes, you know, because 7 uh, into 20 is approximately 2.8. So let's move on to the next part. So a new road is being built through point Q. If we look at our diagram here, point Q is going to be down over here and this perpendicular road will go through like that. So we need to get the equation of that one. So now we're going to use the line formula and the slope formula. So let's go to our log tables. You can see your slope formula is here and the line formula is down here. So we're going to use those. All right, so first of all, now we need to get the slope of PQ. So let's write our points PQ, minus one plus three. That's our X one, Y one. And then we have six, two. And that's our X two, Y two. All right, so let's use our slope formula. M is equal to Y two minus Y one. 
over x2 minus x1. And now let's substitute everything in carefully. So m is equal to, we have y2 is 2 minus y1 is 3. So we're going to have 2 minus 3 as the numerator. And down below for the denominator, we will have x2, which is 6, minus x minus minus 1, which is going to be minus the one below. So we get 6 minus, open your brackets when you're inputting a negative value. And let's use the calculator now, and we will get our slope of 7 below and 1 above, and it's all negative. So minus 1 over 7 is the slope of PQ. So it makes sense. Okay, so that's not the slope of the perpendicular line perpendicular line will have an inverted slope. So if this one is 1 over 7, our perpendicular line, and that's negative, will be to change the sign. So m2 can be the perpendicular slope, and we will flip this one, okay, invert it, so it's 7 over 1, and change the sign. So it'll be plus 7. So I'll just make a note here. So minus 1 over 7, we're going to flip and change the sign. You can do a check as well. If we multiply them together, m1 by m2 is equal to minus 1. So do that check, and of course they work out to a product result of minus 1 or of plus 7. Right, so all we have to do now is the line equation. So again, you know where to find it, page 18 of your log tables. And let's use that. So y minus y1 is equal to m by x minus x1. So now let's coordinate everything together um, accurately. So we need to use point Q which is this 6, 2 as our x1, y1 and our m2 which are inverted slope as plus 7. So just be careful at this point are you using the correct points and slopes okay as there's a lot of information here and you just have to be careful and do a check. So y1 y1 is here and we're going to go with y1 and so y minus 2 is equal to 7 our slope by x minus x1 which is 6 all right so all we have to do is multiply it all out so y minus 2 is equal to 7x minus 42 bring everything to one side as we can see up above we have this we have this format and we need to reformat it down here like that. So let's put all that together. So we bring the 7x over and we will get 7x, which is negative, plus y. Bring over our for plus for minus 42, it'll be a plus then. So we get minus 2 plus 42, which is plus 40. Again, take your time. If I'm going fast, pause the video and just check everything. Okay, and that's our result. And it's in the, everything is on the left-hand side. So it matches the required format in the question. So that's the most difficult part of this quadrant geometry in the June cert 2022. So let's have a look at the last part here. Kind of a bonus mark question, if you can get this right. So we want to we want to find the actual distance, and we have a scale to work off. So we have um, seven point one centimeter measurement on our diagram. Okay, we need to convert this into millimeters, as our scale involves millimeters and meters. Okay, so we're going to have to get seventy one millimeters. 
is equal to 7.1 centimeters. Now we have it converted. So let's see how many times 5 will go into 71. Okay, and then we can multiply by 100 then because 5 millimeters is, represents 100 meters. Okay, so let's see how many 5s we have. And we will get 14.2. So 14.2. Okay, 5 millimeters. So each 5, each of those is actually 100 meters so 14.5 okay is it multiplied by 100 is equal to the actual distance so if we multiply by 100 and we convert into kilometers so then multiply by 100 and we get 14500 meters which is equal to 1.45 kilo 4 it's 1450 meters and then divide by 1000 so we're going to get 1.45 kilometers. So not really that long. Okay, so that's our measurement. I'll just do a quick recap look, because there was a lot of information there. All right, so first of all, you convert these centimeters to millimeters. Okay, as we have five millimeters to 100 meter scale. So now we have a basis to calculate our actual value. So if you divide 5 into 71, that's how many 100 meter actual lengths are in between P and Q. There's 14 of those, 14.5 of those, multiplied by 14.5. Just move the decimal two places. Okay, and we get 1450. And again, it's not complete as we need to convert our answer to kilometers and we're on to question four so let's have a quick look at the exam question so the first part we're just going to work out um the missing link here given the perimeter so that's pretty straightforward on to part b now where we're going to look at a triangle with algebra so that means we're going to have to sum up the three sides and get a result in algebra so again just uh, adding your x's there is pretty straightforward and on to part to B part two now we give we're given the value twenty four we set it equal to the perimeter which is summed up in algebra and we solve for x so let's work out those parts to start off with so you can see there we're given eight okay so the eight is the total so eight minus two minus three point five use your calculator just be careful get this right. Uh, is going to be 2.5 so that's this, the the base of triangle a all right so that's the first part so on to part b now we're going to have to sum up okay the the three sides together to get the perimeter so we say the perimeter of b is equal to 3 plus 2x plus 2x plus 1 very straightforward and we're going to get 4x when we add the 2x and 2x and we have a 4 so very straightforward there so let's see what happens so that perimeter now pb is equal to 24 so we got to solve for x got to solve okay so people like solving puzzles okay now we're solving algebra so we have 24 is equal to 4x plus four so we're going to um we're going to just bring the four over now and we're going to go four x just swap them back to front if you know what i mean so we're going to get 24 in 
and then negative 4 because it's as if I brought it over here and then you change the sign then you see so 4x is equal to 20 and you guessed it simple maths divide 4 onto both sides and we'll get a result of x is equal to 5 so very straightforward so far all right so let's go on to the second section in question 4 so in part C we're given some information that the progression of the perimeters in a series is linear so that means if we have the first and the second we can then add the same difference on to the second value to get the third okay so we got to do that um, and then with that result then you see we'll have the perimeter for the third triangle and then we're going to solve for y so it's actually we're going to have like a y squared there actually okay so let's put all that together so we could just go back to the start okay so perimeter a was 8 so perimeter a that's our first term in our series perimeter b is 24 okay and then if it's linear okay the difference d is equal to a constant okay so we can go 24 minus 8 is equal to 16 okay so we need to go to the third term now so we're going to like plus 16 and when we plus 16 to 24 we will get 40 so that is the perimeter of the uh, triangle C okay so let's go down to part B because we need to solve for Y okay so we have 5y squared and y squared plus 3 so let's see how it works out maybe it's going to be we have a y squared so we're going to have to put all of this together so we'll go the sum of the three sides just like before with the perimeter in part b so we have 5 plus y squared plus y squared plus 3 okay and check that and it, everything looks fine so that will give 2y squared for these two and then we have a 3 and 5 is it 8 okay so that sum now can be equated to the result up here you know so let's get that one so we have the 40 so bring it down and now we can balance our equation and we can solve for y so we're going to go 2y squared, just switch it back to front, it's easier in this side. And then we go 40. Okay, we have an 8 over here. So let's bring our 8 over. And we get 2x, 2y squared. Okay, it's a y there and 40. And minus 8 now, so it's like we're subtracting 8 from both sides. So if we go 8 minus 8, and we go minus 8 on the other side, now it's bad. So we're going to get 2y squared is equal to 32 so we're nearly there so we have to divide both sides by 2 let's work that out so divide by 2 and divide by 2 so we're going to get 16 is equal to y squared so um, we want to get the square root now because what number multiplies by itself to give a result of 16 when it's 4 isn't it so y is equal to the square root of 16 we could get negative 4 as well as a possible result because it's a linked okay we're going to choose a positive because they would be rational so y is equal to plus or minus 4 and then y is equal to plus 4 all right so let's look at the volumes okay so we have the volume of a cylinder first of all where we have a pump and the second part in is a balloon then that's a sphere so we got to get the formulas for those okay in your log table so let's start off so first of all we need to show that the volume of the cylinder is 180 pi centimeters cubed so it looks a bit tricky at the start 
but it's not really because we can use the formula and the input directly volume is equal to pi r squared h for a cylinder we have to be sure about the r so if we look over here we have a radius okay of 3 because the diameter is 6 so we just go diameter is equal to 6 centimeters therefore the radius is equal to 3 centimeters so that's the only change we have to make here as you can see the height there is 20 so pi by 3 squared by 20 so 20 by 3 squared is 9 20 by 9 is 180 so therefore we got it 180 pi and centimeters cubed as it's a volume part b now we have a sphere so what's the change in the sphere well we don't have a height we have 4 over 3 pi r cubed okay so what we have here now is a new shape and we have a new dimension okay so r is equal to 15 and the volume is over here so we're going to use that and substitute everything in so v is equal to 4 over 3 by pi so we're just going to put the 15 cubed okay in first here 15 cubed and then put the pi over here because we can use this with the calculator only okay so we'll get a final result after inputting this into your calculator and remember if you're getting stuck on the cube there is a button on your calculator which looks like this x with a box up here as a power and you can sub in any number there three in this case will be inputted so four over three by 15 cubed so let's work that out that's three thousand three hundred and seventy five there and finally then we will get 4500 pi and again right in centimeters cubed always check uh, what are we what dimension are we working in sometimes it's area sometimes it's length in this case it's volume all right so the next part is to work out how many how much time it will take Dara to pump up um, the uh, balloon okay this new balloon and part C then is that we have a new balloon, okay, and we have 50 pumps of the cylinder, and at that point we need to find the new radius. So a bit tricky there, team. So let's see how all of this works out. All right. So if he pumps it every second, and he's inflating up to the desired volume, well, we need to go to 4,500 as our target. Okay, and for each pump then we have 180. So just take your time. So now we got to cancel the buys, okay? And then 4,500 divided by 180 is 25. And that's the seconds. All right, so finally now we are on to um, part C, where Gustav will pump up a new balloon for 50 seconds. So each pump is going to be 180 pi centimeters cubed. Okay, multiplied by 50. Okay, so let's work that out. So that's going to give 9,000 pi centimeters cubed. Okay, and then we have, that's also equal to the radius cubed, okay, when the formula, four over three, R cubed and we put pi over there so again you can see if we have pi on both sides it makes things a lot simpler doesn't it just cancel them off all right so what will we do here now with the algebra well you see we have a 4 okay above here so that means we can divide across then by 4 so we just go 4 over 4 on that side and we can cancel it and we get 9000 over 4 over here okay and what about the 3 well um, if we multiply across then we're going to get the 3 so we're going to 3 by 9000 is 27000 divided by 4 and that's equal to r cubed alright so all we have to do now is get r 
so how do we reverse the cube well we have to use the cube root okay so let's look at that so if we go r to the power of 3 and we cube root it we will get r so let's do that over here so we're going to go to cube root of our number which is actually 60 6750 is equal to r and therefore our answer to one decimal place is 18.9 check it with your calculator see does it work out centimeters so let's have a look at the question as you can see we have two sets and one set relates to the jobs worked by a group of students and the second one is related to the holidays they took in the description we have fractions and we have percentages so we have to put all the information into the the Venn diagram and solve for the unknown which is the total number of students on holidays so let's get started all right so we can see there that one-fifth of the students um, did neither well that means that they didn't take a job or they didn't go on holidays so let's work that out so one-fifth of the 80 is equal to 16 students so let's place that outside the next bit of information relates to 25 percent of students got a job so let's work that out so 25% multiplied by 80 is one quarter, which is 20 students. So this doesn't go inside the set. It goes outside because it's a total and we may have to distribute that 20, okay, within the set. And the additional information is that of those students who got a job, half also went on holidays. Well, that's very straightforward so that means that half of the 20 students will go in the center okay so that's 10 here and 10 on the left okay so now we have to find what's in the holidays only to find out the total number who took holidays so let's x equal to the number of holidays only so this part isn't shared and this will help us solve so we can do a summation now so we can do a, a, a equation where we have the total is 80 and that will be equal to 16 plus 10 plus 10 plus the x which is the holidays only so let's bring everything over and we can get x is equal to 80 bring the 16 and the 10 and the 10 across and we get minus 36 so x is equal to 44 okay so that's going to go in here so the total on holidays will be 10 which is in the center plus the 44 holiday only which is 54 so let's do a quick recap work out the outside part 16 we have to get a total for the jobs split that in two as half of them also went on holidays then we have to solve for the unknown in here so we're going to put in the letter x then to to solve and we can do a balance then with the 80 work out for holiday only and plus your 10 back in to get the total so let's have a look at the question it looks really tricky here at the start but the question is based on log rules so we're going to look up the log rules and look at which rules are applicable to this combination when we have a series 
of numbers with powers the second question we're going to use similar formula and on the third one we have to solve for this unknown down here m okay so we have to use um, a number of log rules to solve part b so let's get started so amy and joe are asked to pick values from the numbers p q and r so that the following combination is true so we have a to the power of p multiplied by a to the power of q multiplied by a to the power of r is equal to a to the power of 12. so in this case we're going to look up the log tables and you can see we have a series and when we have a series we can plus the numbers okay so amy picked three values that are the same p is equal to q which is equal to r so this means that we have to divide the 12 by 3 very straightforward and we're going to get 12 over 3 is equal to 4 so we're going to get p q and r are all fours so we have a variation now where joe picked three values which are all different so let's go back to the rule so this is addition when we have the powers in series therefore we can choose any numbers any three numbers which will sum up to 12 so let's go with uh, 10 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 12 we could choose any other combination 6 plus 4 plus 2 is equal to 12 and so forth so let's go to 10 and the 1 keep it simple so p is equal to 10 q is equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 all right so finally we have a tricky enough looking combination so we have a fraction and also we have an unknown over here and we have this m value so let's look at the rules which are relevant here because we have a fraction down here and we need to find out what will we do with that b well first of all let's rewrite it so we're going to go with b to the power of m multiplied by b to the power of minus 2 so that's the original series rule we were working with and then below we have a fraction but we're going to apply the power of 1 with the b so b is equal to b to the power of 1 let's look up the relevant rule now because we need to we need to um, bring up the b so if we go to this log rule where we have this one here we're going to zoom in on that one and that means that if we have a power down here we can bring it up and change the sign so let's bring it up so that will be b to the power of m multiplied by b to the power of minus 2 and the negative the one below is negative so it'll be b to the power of minus 1 all right so now we have we have the series there's one more step now with the algebra we have to combine everything together and then set it equal to 10 so let's combine it all together so therefore we will have m minus 2 minus 1 so b to the power of m minus 2 minus 1 and you can see we're using this rule again where we have the powers in series and that's equal to b to the power of 10 so let's solve so we get b to the power of m minus 3 so m minus 3 is this value up here and we can compare it to the 10 over here that's equal to 10 bring your 3 across and therefore m is equal to 13 and that's our answer hello and welcome back to maths plus we're continuing the junior cycle higher level and we're on to question 8 so let's have a quick look at the question so we have two triangles here and we have two buildings and first of all we need to find the angle in the corner 
of building B so that we have to find angle C. In the second part, we're finding the hypotenuse. So we have to use Pythagoras theorem. And the third part, where you where we get into height up here, as we're doing some trigonometry, we have to use a trigonomet trigonometric function. So let's get started. So we have all the details here. Basically, we're describing the diagram. All right, so let's get started on numbers, part C. And find C. Let's so, so first of all, we have to subtract 35 and the angle in the corner here from 180 to get the, the corner angle. So we're going to do our summation here. We can say 180 degrees, subtract 90 from the corner, and then subtract 35 degrees from the top left hand side. And we'll get a result of 55, which is the corner angle C. So far, so good. On to part B now, and we have to find the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle down here. And so we have to coordinate everything together with the Pythagoras for formula. So the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the opposite two sides squared. So we have it there. So let's compute it out. And we'll have y squared is equal to 220 squared plus 154 squared, which is a total of 76,112. So we have y squared. We want, we want to find y. So we have to square root the y squared. Remember, the square root of y squared is equal to y. So we're going to need square root both sides. So y squared square root it is is will be y and then we have the square root of 76,112 so our result will be 269 rounded to the nearest meter and that's it so have a look at your diagram just to check the scale as remember y is greater than 220 and 154 so it makes sense with the scale to part C now and we need to find the total height of building B so we have building A and we need an additional height which is related to the top triangle so let's investigate the geometry and choose the correct trigonometric function for that triangle All right, so we have three trigonometric choices. We have sine, cosine, and ten. So which one will we choose? Let's go back. We have this one. We have this one. So that's the opposite, and that's the adjacent. Therefore, we're going to choose the tangent, or ten. So the ten of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And we can also substitute in some more information the opposite is h we're solving for h and the adjacent is 154 let's cross multiply so h is equal to 10 of 20 degrees multiplied by 154 and we will get a result to the nearest meter of 56 meters So let's have a look. We have 56 up here. We have the 220 down here. Let's sum them together. And that will give us a total height of building Z, denoted as letter Z, is 276 meters. And that's it for question eight of the 2022 junior cycle higher level maths. We're doing question nine k is equal to 7, m minus k is equal to 4, work out the value of 9k minus 3m. So we know k, we do not know m, so let's work it out with simple algebra. So m replace the k with 7. So m minus k is the same as m minus 7, which is equal to 4. 
just bring it across and change the sign it'll be 4 plus 7 therefore m is equal to 11 so we're going to substitute this now into the second part 9k minus 6m so 9k is 9 by 7 and minus 6m is minus 6 by 11 so let's work these out separately so 9 by 7 is 63 6 by 11 is 66 it's also negative so 63 minus 66 will be minus 3 and that's our answer so so far so good factorize fully the following expression 8ax minus 14bx plus 4ay minus 7by so if we look at this we need to factorize it but there's four terms so this would suggest that we are doing grouping so we're going to get two groups of two so first of all let's look at the commonality with the numbers so we have 8 minus 14 4 and negative 7 so we can do um, pairs here you know negative 14 negative 7 4 and 8 have also commonality as they're the, both divisible by 4 so we're going to split up the terms in that manner okay so that would be the most important step then it, we can factor out the common highest common factor in the sets of terms so let's start so 8ax and 4ay that's the first group and let's write the second group as well so the larger number will go first so we'll have minus 14bx so we want to color this so we can separate them out so we have minus 14bx and then we have it minus 7by now let's look at the highest common factor for each set so now we're going to have 4a which is common on both terms here and then we can take out the 4a from 8ax and we will get 2x We'll take out 4a from 4ay and we will get plus y and now we're going to repeat the same process for the second set so what can we take out there well let's look at it so we definitely can take out 7 and that's as high as we can go so we'll take out negative 7 as they're both negative and we'll also take out the b all right so we we have 2x inside and plus y minus 7b by y is already above okay so now we have one final step so as you can see there's two common brackets here which are the same so we're going to group them together so we're going to group the the actual terms okay in two sets okay so the second one will be common so we're going to get 4a minus 7b all by the common factor which is 2x plus y and that's your answer on to part c and i've already started because we're going to write these two fractions as a single fraction so the first step there is to multiply across Going to multiply across okay take the denominator here multiply it up by the three take the denominator there on the second fraction and multiply it across up by the two then we're going to multiply these two together so let's get started so we're going to get two by three x plus five on top and also a negative 3 
by 2x plus 1 on the right hand side as our numerators and down below we're going to get the two denominators multiplied together and we can just write them alongside each other you do not need to multiply them out as it's already simple when it's in the brackets so let's multiply out the two parts here and we're going to get 6x plus 10 and over here we are going to multiply these two we get negative 6x minus 3 so take your time be careful with the signs and down below then we got we have the two brackets from the original multiplication so up above it's going to simplify the six x's will cancel as one is positive and one is negative and we will get 10 minus 3 for the numbers so the final result is 7 over 2x plus 1 by 3x plus 5. That's it. And finally, solve the equation and give your answer to two decimal places. So this is a quadratic equation. So usually we could factorize it and then set this factor to 0 and solve for the roots. But when we get um, a result in the format of decimal places where we need to use the quadratic formula or the minus b formula so here it is so each of the coefficients are the numbers before the x squared the x and the number will be the a b and c which will go into our formula so as you can see we have a is equal to 2 is the co coefficient of the x squared b is equal to negative 7 not plus 7 you got to keep the sign and negative 3 is the number on the right hand side so let's put it all into the quadratic formula and you can look this up on your log tables page 20 so x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a so it'll be minus brackets minus 7 as the minus 7 is the input and then inside this square root we'll have minus 7 squared is b squared minus 4 by a by c which is minus 4 by 2 by negative 3 all over 2a which is 2 by 2 okay so let's see what we get so that the, you can put it all into your calculator and then do the plus first okay so for the plus we will just go up here put the plus in first and we'll get a result of 3.886 or 88.886 okay so we call that x1 that's provisional and then we're going to round that to two decimal places afterwards and for x2 then the second root which is for the negative and that will be negative 0 0.386 all right so let's round them to do the two decimal places as required so what we're going to do now is focus on the third and fourth term okay so the 86 becomes 90 so it'll be 3.89 let's look at x2 the 86 will become 90 again the 86 will push up if it was 84 it would go down to 80 so as it's 86 it will go up to 90 so the answer is minus 0.39 for the 90 I'm back we're on question 10 Ali and Tom took part in a triathlon They do 5 kilometers kayak, 25 kilometer cycle, and a 10 kilometer run. So one of these values is higher than the other. So for instance, at this point, Addy takes two minutes longer than John to complete the kayak section. So we're going to do all the different sections now in the 
in the question. So did Ali finish the kayak section ahead of John, behind John or at the same time of John? So the you can see here that he's two minutes after John, so it will be behind John. Okay, and that's the first part. What is happening? John and Ali at the same point mark B on the diagram. So if we look at the pattern, he's going slower, then he's coming down here, he, he's getting faster and faster. Okay, so he's after catching up. So at that point, they actually meet. Okay, so they, they're at the same speed. So they're meeting. at the same point, at the same speed really, the same uh, point. So at that stage, you can see that Ali is passing John. Okay, and Ali is just about to pass John. So Ali is passing, if we go with the progression, is passing John on his bicycle. Okay, it makes sense. All right, so now we have to fill in the times and compare John's time to Ali's time. So these are all relative. So we gotta be careful here because um, each section has to be taken independently. So we'll just get this right here. Let me take this out. All right, so what we have here is plus two minutes for Ali's time for the kayak. So it'll be at 34. All right, so then Ali proceeds, okay, in catching up John to point B, and then he does, uh, the, he finishes the cycle section one minute faster. So he has plus, he's plus two up here. Then he's at, he goes it's gonna he's going to catch up so he, he's going to take two minutes off the time and then by the time he comes down here it's another minus one okay so he's after gaining three minutes so that means three minutes less so he will take 35 minutes so we got to start up here and in down here so that's a total of a three minute game three minute gains okay so at the final section here now it's going straight across so that means it's this it's going to stay the same they're really running at the same rate so there's no time difference okay so he's going to be he's going to do the run at 36 as well okay so when we add up all of those we will get um a hundred and five minutes and that makes sense because he's one minute faster overall party we have john and ali running a 400 meter race and ali will take two seconds longer than john to run the 400 meters so at the start now we have to calculate the time for john and then we can add in our two two seconds and then solve for the this Ali's speed and his average speed or it's just we can say it's the speed so we will write our formula here now so speed is equal to distance over time start off with this so you want us we want to swap up here now with the time and the speed because we can work out John's time okay so time is equal to distance over speed which is equal to 400 meters, which is set a set distance over the, his average speed in meters per second. So we write in our units here, meters and meters per second. Okay, so we'll get seconds in our answer. So if we put that into our calculator, we will get 51.28 seconds. Keep it at two decimal places. All right, so we're going to work out um, Ali's speed now. 
okay and remember the speed is the distance which is 400 stays the same over the new time which would be t plus 2 because it's 2 seconds more okay so we put all those values together plug them into our calculator and we will get 400 over 53.28 and that will give is our is meters per second rate of 7 point 507 we wanted to so many decimal places so let's look up wanted to one decimal place so it'll be 7.5 meters per second We're on question 11 and its coordinate geometry so the line h has slope 4 and it goes through the x-axis down here so find the coordinates of another point on line h other than the point shown 20 and 12. i'll show you're working out okay so let's look at the information here we have a point and we have a slope so that means we can put together the equation of a line so go to your log tables and we can use the line formula here okay we already have the slope but they're relevant for finding the line all right so let's uh, do our working out now so we're going to use this formula y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1 and x1 y1 as you can see there are 20 and 12 so you can assign x1 y1 up here and then m is equal to 4 up here so let's really really do this fast and we'll find another point in once we have the coordinates of the x axis crossover okay so y minus y1 which is 12 is equal to 4 by x minus 20. all right let's multiply in now so y minus 12 is equal to 4x 4 by minus 20 is minus 80. so let's bring everything to one side and keep it tidy so we bring the minus 4x over plus 1y 80 comes across so we have minus 12 plus 80 which is plus 68 is equal to zero so that's our line and um, that's line h so we could put h here with a colon so the next part will be to find another point okay so we know from uh, the theory that the x and y intercepts okay are occur on the axis so remember on the x-axis y is equal to zero because the height of y is equal to zero so we could write over here x axis y is equal to zero on the y axis x is equal to zero so whichever one you want to do okay it will work out for one of the axes so let's go with the x axis so we're going to set y equal to zero therefore we're going to get minus 4x plus zero plus 68 is equal to zero so let's work this out now um, so i'm going to bring across the 68 so minus 4x is equal to negative 68 divide across by 4 and we will get minus 68 over minus 4 and that will go in 17 times so x is equal to 1 7 all right so let's see does that make sense so um if that's 20 over here yeah you know it makes sense so that's going to be 17 for the x and 0 for the y question 12 the diagram below shows the circle k 
and points a b and c are on the circle so a b is the diameter and so we're given some information here a c is 8 centimeters and the area of the circle is 25 pi centimeter squared so we have the area so that will help us to get the radius or the diameter so work out the smallest angle in triangle ABC so we need to get another side here because then we can use trigonometry with the right angle triangle all right so from your theorems in the Junior cycle we have the two cards intersecting at 90 degrees here okay um, now we want to get the smallest angle so we're going to refer to that as theta all right so we're going to focus now on the area so the area of the circle is 25 pi and that's equal to pi r squared We can divide across by pi. So r squared is equal to 25. And r is equal to the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. Okay, so that means that we have 5 plus 5. So our diameter is equal to 10 centimeters. So let's focus on the triangle here now from C to A to B. So we want to find theta down there in the corner. So we're going to rewrite that and we will look at it in a sketch and we'll say that the hypotenuse or the um the hypotenuse is actually 10. Okay, because I'm going to flip it back to front here. So the diameter is the hypotenuse, and then the adjacent is 8. All right, so you can see there, I flipped that. Okay, and you gotta do that so you can see it clearly. So if we have the adjacent and we have the hypotenuse, remember from our trigonometry, we can say that SOCATOA or whichever system you use. So let's go with SOCATOA. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and that's the two we have then. So we got it, and now we need to find our angle. So we can say that the cos of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 8 over 10. And therefore, we can get the cos inverse for the angle. So theta is equal to cos inverse of 8 over 10. So you, you press shift in your calculator and then you put the fraction button together okay in to the input and we get an angle then of let's look at the rounding so it's we don't have to make it to the nearest whole number or decimal places but it works out as we'll just put four over five there or eight over ten it's the same and so theta is equal to 36.86 9 so that's approximately theta is equal to 37 degrees okay and it makes sense it looks to scale so always check does it make sense